I met AB a couple years back. You know, I, for those of you who don't know, I've been in in, in, the, in the rap game, quote unquote, for, for literally since I was like 11 years old. I started doing slam poetry and then I eventually got into beatboxing and rapping and then I've been performing ever since then. At times I had ambitions of being a celebrity and being famous to some extent and just getting known and getting my music out there. And, and over the times that's, that's obviously changed and stuff like that and, and my direction with my music and my heart for the music has definitely changed and grown but you know I it, what's so unique about how I met AB is you know I spent 10 years in Arizona I never really collabed with anybody I only probably met about two or three cats out here that were really doing music for the Lord and even then it was very seasonal it was not a culture out here to do Christian hip-hop I never even knew about Christian hip-hop till I was in college and I thought it was all whack uh, even as a Christian um, you know, God was doing a work on my heart even back then to even have an appreciation for people that would cry out to God and give him praise in any capacity. So, you know, that's what it looked like for me coming onto the scene. And so I felt like a lone wolf doing this Christian hip hop thing and preaching the gospel at my high school and my college because, you know, I was not plugged into a biblically solid church. So I didn't have the step two, three, and four, five after being saved and have the luxury and, and great privilege to be discipled in a way that really made me effective. So I was really out there just doing my thing. And out of God's grace, he not only kept me, but kept a compassion in me for a hatred for sin and a compassion for Jesus Christ and the gospel and eventually did pull me into a very solid uh, set of churches and a very solid community. Now fast forward to that part where he started plugging me into a really dope community. One random day I decided to go to a concert uh, to go see some of my homies that I eventually found out who rap and I met GNG, the Good News Gang and, and AB was a part of that and they were this gritty group and I remember they were so captivating because one, their energy energy you could just immediately spot from the moment that they performed that they not only knew each other but that they loved each other and that they were extremely talented um, and so uh, I, I knew like I'm the type of guy who like I build relationships with people and I connect people and that's just something that I felt more assured about as I, as I moved on in my walk as a Christian is like I'm kind of the web to a lot of the things going on around here and I have a passion for just not only discipleship, preaching the gospel, um, being sanctified in my own heart and having the things around me that can set me up for success there, uh, but just serve it, service, like serving this community and uh, with this context and giving people who aren't familiar with this context perspective. So anyways, I say all that to say this, I met AB, Right after the show, I got introduced to all his clique and a couple of the people and um, some of my people met his people. We all went to In-N-Out Burger, we ate, and then we just kicked a freestyle. I remember thinking in the back of my mind, like, yo, I need to get these cats to freestyle. Like, I, w I wanna see, freestyle it, it, for me coming up was oftentimes the thermostat for just seeing how seasoned an MC was. Mm. You know, do they really do this rap thing a lot? Or is it just something that they get in the booth once a month or whenever they find a hot song and just kind of step in and out? So anyway, I, rem I remember clear as day, a lot of people left that night at the in and out but a lot of the rappers did come through and we just started freestyling and kicking writtens out outside uh, of this in and out burger and, and there's still some clips of that to this day online. But um, I remember AB, he could freestyle. And he had, and not only could he freestyle, but he had absolutely no problems doing it. You know, a lot of people can freestyle, but they get nervous. They get cold feet. He was just down to freestyle. He was freestyling about the Lord. He's freestyling about where he was from. I just thought that was so dope. And then, you know, he would kick writtens and he just had a gritty sound to him. And for those of you who don't know, you know, AB, just his imagery of your traditional white man, he is not that. <laughs> so he comes from the hip hop context. He's from Texas. He's got his own flavor and he's a unique human being. So even just being around him and so up game to like what he is and and how he functions is a unique experience to anybody so I remember that just being super ill and so um, you know I was obviously captivated by this dude's talent and his ability and even his song making was just something I had never heard in Arizona in a very long time and the fact that he had a group made it even better because I was like I was already on the accountability tip and knowing how important that was so I was like yo these brothers love Christ and they live together and like this is this not only has a ton of potential but like praise God that God introduced me to these cats 
uh, where I was in my walk, where I really felt like God was really grounding me in strong biblical truth mm. and gave me a heart to want to pour into cats. And I had like a 10 year track record of making music to where I could pour into dudes practically on how the music could be successful. Mm. And I had a lot of experience with freestyling and street preaching and different stuff like that so that I could basically motivate and, and kind of stir up the pot, if you will, uh, with these cats. So anyways, my follow-up question to all this stuff is, you know, yeah. when I started listening to your music early on, I remember you sent me the Exodus record with you and, and, and uh, Wes. Yeah. That was like one of the first records I heard, and it was still to this day one of my favorite records, period, just because of the grit in it, the, sim the symbolism, yeah. the imagery about like chasing the things of the world and, and not God. Um, you know, early on, I, I noticed you had this really gritty sound. You'd talk about life. You would be like super transparent and talk about subjects that a lot of people in Christian hip hop are just too afraid to talk about with a, with a real sense of who they are. They, they kind of just talk about them with the church language and right. the church call, but you can't, you can tell they don't really mean what they say and stuff like that. So, um, you, 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 your music has always been really gritty to me, but you know, you have your happy moments where you, you celebrate Jesus Christ absolutely and yeah. all of that. And I think even in the, in the sadder and grittier songs, you still have a pull in you that wants to celebrate and worship Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And I think being in those moments and worshiping God in those moments is a, is a great worship for Certainly. people to see and replicate uh, when they're in their struggles. Um, but you, you definitely, point blank period have a raw story to tell yeah um so and anyone will catch that right away when they hear your music so like i know this is kind of a really open-ended question but like mm. tell us a little bit about that like as you hear me talking about it like yeah. like like the sounds gritty you have a heart for the people and being transparent like why all this right right like this pretty pretty much like why am i so transparent in the music yeah yeah like what about being gritty and right. I mean, you can't help who you are and Certainly. where you came from but like like what just really drives you to do this music certainly yeah, yeah and I mean honestly I think it points back to the love of my neighbor you know like and, and the reason I say that is because if I love my neighbor I'm gonna be truthful with them I'm gonna give them not some fake thing I'm gonna be real with them you know in a way that can edify them you know and so I uh, and so that's pretty much what points towards a transparency tip is because every time I write a song, in that writing process, I think, okay, how can this encourage, edify somebody, uh, of course, give glory to God, and also at the same time, be real. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and that's the thing, like, I don't know what it is, like, God just gave me that type of personality. I've never been scared to be transparent, you know, and so... And it just shows in the music. And so, like, if I'm having a struggle with sin, uh, if if I feel this type of way about somebody or something like that, I, I'm, I'm just open with it, you know. And so, uh, and again, the reason being is because, like, I just want to encourage people, you know, and edify people. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and, and that's just kind of how God wired me. And so, that's just how it shows up in the music, just wanting to be real with people, uh, tell them who I am, that way God can be glorified. Like, look, I'm not some special, like I tell people all the time, like at shows, like I try to let them know, like, hey, look, just cause I'm up here on stage in front of you with a mic, that doesn't mean I'm any better than you. That doesn't mean I'm some superstar. Yeah. You know, I have struggles just <clears throat> like you. I got bills just like you. You know what I'm saying? I got to fill up my gas tank just like any other car. Right. You know, and, and and so, and even you know, even deeper than that, I got sin issues just like y'all. You know, right. so uh, and so yeah, that's the thing. Like I think, I think, I mean, Scripture calls us, you know, confess your sins to one another. You know, and so and that doesn't mean you got to tell everybody and anybody. You know, you got those who you walk with, of course. Yeah. But on like a surface level type thing, I want people to really see what this Christian life is. Like, look, yeah. it's it's a bunch of brokenness. But and like you said, like when I when I write about brokenness, I try to wrap it up in the end, but like build it up to but look, Christ can, you know what I'm saying, save you. He, right. can, he can pull you through it. He's pulled me through plenty of things. He still does today. And so, uh and I know plenty of others that God has pulled them through it, you know, and so uh and so yeah, it's just it's just about being real. Like I want people like you said, I don't wanna just like make this makeup type, you know, church talk type music. 
where it like seems like oh well that just don't seem real yeah. like I want to be real but at the same time have the same message that they have but just be like real with the the, the transparency part yeah and so uh, yeah pretty much just to wrap that up in a nutshell that's kind of how where the transparency part comes in yeah and and that's so dope and, and I think it's important because um, you know you can see cats at concerts performing or in a cipher or just like upload some music online and yeah you kind of do this battle as a fan where like the dudes who you really finally there's not a lot of people to really gravitate towards in the Christian community in my opinion right and and even the ones that are really captivating you always think in the back of your mind like the really gritty dudes you always ask yourself what is that their lifestyle really look like right, right you know are they just putting the suit on for church when they step in the booth and then taking it off like like you know what what is their christian life really looking like do they really live out what they're talking about or are they just gifted and profound because a lot of these dudes are super gifted um by god's grace to to do some amazing things lyrically and and bring some concepts up but that usually never is a true indicator for like what their lifestyle actually looks like so it's not only important i think for you on stage to Mm kind of let people know that you're a regular guy with the same issues as everybody else that that does i think need to be done because it is reassuring to to people who look at you like yo i am essentially you yeah um but <clears throat> also, you got to actually have a, a lifestyle that lets people see yeah, exactly. that your life matches up exactly with the music mm. so that when they hear you say something, it's even more profound because right. they know and can picture what that'll translate like in your life because they've seen it. So I just think that that's not yeah. only is the transparency in music important, but the reminder to the audience mm. that you're no status figure. Um, you know, you've got no level of value that's right. above them. You know, nothing special is about you. You guys, the power of your story is the same as the power in their testimony, and that's Jesus Christ. And uh, and when you're getting off stage, you're living that life out, and you're shooting right. for the same things that you're talking about. Um, you know, what was one of the most game-changing truths about God that just rocked your view of Him, and mm-hmm. just kind of completely changed how you saw music and what its Mm. use was for certainly yeah i mean definitely you know his sovereignty you know like when i when i i mean people call it reform you know reform doctrine you know some people call it you know calvinism whatever you want to call it i mean i think it's just bible you know reforming means let's get back to what scripture said sure and so when once i really seen that like was uh, because When I first, you know, became a Christian, that's kind of how I seen the word anyway. But I didn't know the the terminology for it. Sure. So when I got introduced to the terminology of it, that opened up a whole nother spectrum of like just man, this like God is heavy, like God is deep, you know. And so like, sure. And, and so that definitely showed up on my music, like how. And like Unbearded Mafia, for sure, like we was pretty much just having like John Piper type sermons in that whole, you know, uh, track, right. our whole project, uh, like pretty much just pointing to like, you know, only God can save us. Like it's sure. not our dirty works. It's not because that's what I was taught my whole life. Like go to church, you know, uh, do good deeds, you know, and I'm not knocking those things, but like I believe I believe that, like, back then, I believe those things would save you. And pretty much just to wrap all this up, like, in this particular topic, I thought those things saved you. Now, I believe Christ saves you and it caused you to do those things. Yeah. You know, and so uh, pretty much, like, it even changed my life. Like, like not feeling like, man, I got to. Now, I'm not saying, you know, by God's grace, we can continue in sin. Because scripture, of course, says by no means, you know. Right. And, so, and so what I am saying, like. Once I figured out, like it's God that works in me. It's He that's faithful to finish the work. Uh, it's Him that started it. It's Him that's gonna, you know, complete it. Uh, once I realized that, it showed up in my music, and it also showed up in my life. Like, man, I don't no longer have to feel the weight of my sin. Like He, he said, you know, cast your burdens on me. You know, my sure. yoke is light. And so, like, that's when I started doing that because I started to realize, like, dang, you know what, God. I had no part in my salvation at all. It was all by your grace and your spirit working in me. 
uh, and creating me, in me a new heart, you know, and so, uh, that's good, man. yeah, and so that's the thing, like, and, and that started to show in my music, like, that, that I no longer started talking about my good works. I started sure. talking about my brokenness and how by God's goodness, he changed me. You yeah. Know, by his grace alone, you know, and so. Yeah, and that's, that's super important, man, yeah. because one of the biggest misconceptions in the Christian faith now is that the pull of the gospel is how God changes our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you don't talk about what the change actually is and where it comes from, it winds up just becoming a copy of all the other religions right. or philosophies out there, which basically just says, hey, here's a set of morality or things that you should yeah. have as your foundation. And if you have this, your life will be better. All right. <laughs> and it's a lot of makeup and it's a lot of life in vain. Right. And it's a lot of, you know, stuff that God hates because it's not it's not the gospel and it's a misconception that lets people fool themselves into thinking they have the same gospel or a similar mm -hmm. gospel or a good enough gospel. Right. And so, you know, it, it's just, you know, God is saving people to himself that their joys now would be forever in Christ. So the highlight of the Christian's life is a an earthly existence mm -hmm learning to enjoy and see the preciousness and beauty that already is in Jesus Christ. And the most profound reminder of that is his work on the cross. And we begin to see and live out and connect with that more and more and more as we live. And then yeah. we get to actually be with him hmm. without sin. Exactly. That is the beauty of the gospel. And that is the, those are the beautiful truths yeah. that make this earthly life beautiful and yeah. amazing and so anything else that comes with that on yeah. our earthly existence is super dope but it doesn't even compare exactly. that's why the treasures are set in heaven where right. no one can rob mm. um, so you can be that's the power of the gospel you can be broke as a joke your whole life with no hope yeah. you can be crucified like Christ yeah. was um, you can be you can have depression you can yeah have a suffering marriage you can have no uh you know you can never get famous right, you know right. and, and still have the the riches of god in christ so good like wow that's not what people are talking about yeah. you know that life change is rooted in a set of a whole bunch of different truth right that no one's offering right and it's important that you make that distinction because listen the fact that I have a house and I've got food on the table and I have the most amazing wife in the world and, and have all this amazing stuff going on in my life, Certainly. I'm just gonna tell the audience right now, that is not the best part of my life. Wow. You know, that's just facts. The best part of my life is that all of that means something because it's going somewhere. Like my wife is going to heaven by the grace of God. I'm going to heaven to be with him. I was not going there and now I am and, and every day my life is enriched when I see realities and truths about God and in the work of Christ and am reminded of, the, of those constantly and my life becomes better because I just want to know him and as I see him more, I hate what the world has to offer hmm. and None of it really even matters. And, and don't get me wrong, God has made some amazing things in this world. I love music. I love the earth he's created. I love people. Um, I love to pursue sinners and my own sinful heart. Mm. You know, I love those things. Those are amazing, but like they don't even compare. That's good. And that should be our song and our breath of our, of our, our walk and our lifestyle. So, um, you know, with, with that being said, dude, um, we're going to kind of transition into the music. There's a lot of backstory to this, right, right, right. but we're at the, we're at the music. We've talked about some of your influences and your style. We broke down your testimony and we've touched on some really dope stuff here. Um, you know, for those of you who don't know, AB has been making music for a hot minute now. Walk us through your discography, basically, you know, how much how much music have you made to date? What do you have that's official? You know, Certainly. what what's out there? Certainly. So I uh, started off in uh, 2012. I released my first album. It's called Stop the Violence. Uh, put it on iTunes, 
all that good stuff. Uh, from there, um, I mean, that was a, you know, a, a great journey. You know, that's where it all started. It started with me like just making music. Uh, I remember I'd come home from work and I wouldn't get home from work till about four in the morning because I worked for my dad. Uh, I'd come home from work and literally it was the same process every night. I would read scripture and then I would write a song after I wrote scripture. Sure. And I used to wake my mom up and she would be ticked off, like always mad, like always telling me to shut up. <laughs> and so I'd have you to talk about that in some of your songs. Yeah, right? yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And so I'd, uh, I'd have to be quiet. And so like, from that journey, uh, that, you know, created Stop the Violence. I recorded that with my friend uh, Stephen Crow. Uh, and so uh, that was definitely a dope, you know, uh, experience. And then from there, uh, how I was, you know, talking about how I met up. Uh, I, I did some features in between there, you know, with other artists. Mm -hmm. uh, then that's when me and Steven Val, like, got linked up uh, real heavy and we, you know, put out Bearded Mafia. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Bearded Mafia is on Noise Trade, still, you know, free download, it's still available. Uh, then from there, that's uh, after Bearded Mafia, that's when I officially joined Good News Gang, moved to Arizona, you know, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. And then, then we put it, uh, and Good News Gang had projects before this when they had, uh, man, I can't even think of them now because, like I said, I wasn't even in Good News Gang at this time. But they released, I know, two uh, projects prior sure. uh, to this one. But then we released Outcast Society. Uh, you know, 33 track project, you know, that thing <laughs> had music for days. That thing on had it. so much music. Yeah. I still find <laughs> tracks that I didn't hear on yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, man. And so, like, we released that uh, in 2000 and what was that? 2015, I believe. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. 2015. And so, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, from there, you know, we released that. And then, um, me personally, uh, Again, did some features in between there. Uh, you know, I have some great friends, you know, Warren uh, and Wesley. They're working on some stuff, you know, uh -huh. featured on that a little bit, even we'll, featured we'll, on your project. Too. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, and then uh, Abnormal came about. And then Abnormal dropped earlier, the, uh, well, now it's 2017, mm -hmm. early last year, mm -hmm. uh, in April 2016. It's a fire record. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, Ian did uh, all the mixing and mastering. He made it sound crisp. Uh, that too, as well, free free project. It's a mixtape. It's on Noise Trade, SoundCloud as well. Mm -hmm. uh, now, and, let's talk about that yeah, real quick, just as far as the Abnormal project. Um, you know, one, one distinct thing I see about your style is that, you know, you'll jump on just about anything. Yeah. And, like, you get on, I think you jumped on some Play That Funky Music White yeah. Boy, like... <laughs> Dude, yeah. you'll jump on the chopping screw, you'll yeah. jump on the East Coast stuff, you'll do the soul stuff, you'll experiment, you'll do some, like, I think about Oddball Junction, like, you'll yeah. get on some, like, Odd Future type stuff. Yeah. I mean, you really will go just about anywhere to challenge yourself. Um, and I think in some genres that you pick out, you definitely have your lanes where I right. feel like, oh, yo, he owned this beat and it sounds like he's really comfortable on this and other right. stuff, I think, you know, you're you're having fun and, and challenging yourself, which is super dope. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people don't do that. You know, I'm mean, I mean, gonna yeah. just keep it real. A lot of people do the turn up all day long, right. every day long, and, you know, <laughs> as Cat Williams says, gang banging on bacon. You oh, know, like, man. they just have <laughs> one mode that they just can't... Right get off of you know it's that street consciousness all the way through the, yeah. the boom bap all the way through the this and that and it's it, it's interesting i think our generation mm. is moving more towards wanting to express themselves over a variety of things because Certainly. they're searching for for something new right but they exactly. still want to preser preserve the beauties of of what came before us capture some of the new wave and then even mm. flip that into something new i'm seeing sure. that a lot with kind of the dudes you know, kind of between 25 and like 30, yeah. 35 ish, not quite 35, but like a little into your right, 30s. Right, in between there, yeah. You see dudes, you know, it's kind of the J. Cole era, so right, to speak, right. where dudes really have a knowledge of the history of stuff when hip hop really started popping off, but they are still interested in some of the new wave stuff. And so we're just kind of bouncing and ping ponging in a, against a couple of those right. different ideas. What about approaching your music making in this kind of holistic, like, you're thinking about a lot of different music right. going into records. Like, how did that come about? Like, what what about that interests you? Mm. I think uh, I think what causes me to do that 
is for one, it's just to challenge myself as an artist. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because it's so easy to stay in your lane. And many people say like the man like A B kill that track, that's his lane. It's usually like on a trap type beat, a mm -hmm. lot of drums. Do you get mad when you hear that or do you like that? Uh I mean, I don't get I don't get mad. I, I'll probably even say because of that it caused me to open up into other things. Yeah, like let me show them. The right, exactly. Thing. But I don't, I can't get mad because I'd have to agree with them just because I love trap beats and so uh, it just causes me to go all the way in on those. Sure. But uh, I think... Uh all right, guys, so that concludes part two of this interview. You're almost there. We're getting deep. We're digging into the life of A.B., seeing what his music's about. The dude has a crazy testimony. You're almost through it. We saved the best for last as we bring you to a conclusion on what he's working on right now, where he plans on heading with this music, and a couple of special questions dropped in there for your listening pleasure. So hang on, guys. Check out part three of the video, and we're keeping it moving. Peace. Peace. Peace.